Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope that you uh, uh, can hear me and see me together with my uh, colleagues, our, our panelists. Uh, welcome to our uh, session, Building a Vision for Future Research and Innovation in the Blue Economy. Uh, my name is Boris Golob. I'm CEO of STEPRI, Science and Technology Park of University of Rijeka, and I will be moderator uh, during st uh, this session. Um, uh, I work as innovation uh, consultant, and uh, I had opportunity uh, during the last three or four years to work on one particular uh, interagmed project that was trying to establish a way how to manage business models, not just from the economic perspective, but also from the environmental and social perspective. And it was really uh, uh, one of the conclusions is that it's very difficult to establish a long-term sustainability uh, in the blow growth sector if you are just thinking about profits or, or economic size, but it's also important to think about society and how you impact and develop your local communities and of course environment because uh, it's impossible to have blue growth if you uh, do not protect uh, the environment that you are uh, relaying on. So uh, it's my uh, great pleasure to, to welcome our four panelists, which are really uh, related to the, the topic of uh, uh, or challenge how uh, scientists, innovators and other experts search for a holistic view of uh, ocean functions, how we can better understand human interactions uh, with the ocean and which solutions are available or will be available for both sustainable use and stewardship of our uh, uh, planet. So uh, the aim of this session is to discuss future uh, uh, value chain opportunities with additional opportunities for growth, maybe sometimes also risks uh, that, that growth uh, brings and to deploy future thinking tools and build anticipate, anticip anticipatory intelligence about innovations and how they can be exploited within the uh, marine resources in sustainable uh, manner. Uh, this uh, session is supported and and uh, and, and and created uh, uh, by the uh, and by, with the help of University of Split, which is uh, part of the University European University Alliance, which is a pioneering uh, that created Uni European University of the Seas, which comprises six coastal universities and thirty-two associate partners. Uh, research centers, enterprises, public entities, regional uh, authorities, and NGO uh, with the main uh, idea of finding sustainable uh, and fostering sustainable development of Mediterranean, both coast and, and, and blue growth uh, areas. So um, we try to uh, uh, find or they try to address the vision of uh, uh, this area that we live, which is international, pluriethnic, uh, multilingual, in uh, in the disciplinary, in any way, industrial, cultural, or or societal, uh, with a lot of heritage and very very different needs. I hope that this uh, uh, efforts to uh, achieve also to address sustainable development goals from the ocean perspective uh, will be maybe much clearer and and the uh, the way how to achieve it will be much clearer after we hear our four uh, very interesting as i i had a, a, a opportunity to peek into their presentations and of course to see uh, their uh, 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 biographies so very interesting and distinguished speakers they are dr tanya shegvich bubic uh, dr pilar blanco Jeremy Bazan, I hope that I, I, I told the, 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 your surname right, and Hanna Latkowska uh, there. They have a different background coming from different uh, parts of Europe and uh, trying to address different uh, challenges. This session uh, will last until, let's say, one. Uh, the, we will have first our uh, uh, panelists uh, will speakers will present their um, 
uh, presentations which will try and give their perspective on this topic and that will approximately last uh, 10 minutes per, per speaker and then of course we will have Q&A session so we already have some questions because we were really inspired by, by their presentation but we are feel feel free to uh, post questions via chat and I will try to integrate those questions with ours or or pose as, as a standalone uh, question. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me present our first speaker. It is Dr. Tanya Shegvich-Bubic. Uh, she is Senior Research Associate at the Laboratory of Agriculture at the Institute of Oceano Oceanography and Fisheries in Split uh, in Croatia. And she will talk about uh, blue dimensions and challenges in aquaculture. So, uh, Dr. Shevich Bubic, the floor is yours, please. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Boris, for a nice introduction. Uh, I will start now with uh, sharing my screen so we can start the presentation. Can you see it all? Yeah, what? it was. Yeah, very well. Okay. Uh, so, hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of this conference. Uh, my name is Tanya, as Boris said, and introduced me, and I work uh, as a research institute, at, uh, as a research scientist at the Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries in Split in the Laboratory of Aquaculture. I'm mostly involved in applied science, supporting environmentally sustainable industry. And why is this sector important for the blue economy? Uh, because uh, aquaculture provides about half of the fish for human consumption worldwide. It is the fastest growing animal food production sector. And on the left figure, you can see the impact of aquaculture production on total production. And also the fact that fishery are not suspected to grow due to fully or overexploited fish stocks. Uh, but while the, while the aquaculture sector is growing in the rest of the world, it has been stagnated in Europe, especially after economic crisis. On the bottom figure, you can see the production trend in Europe. So commission proposed to promote aquaculture European new approach uh, um, uh, aimed to provide more quality mer merchandise to consumers willing to choose fresh trusted product and also the product that, uh, pr that is um, produced uh, organically or sustainably. So uh, when Horizon 2030 uh, program st started, the program for research and innovation, the program played an important role in unlocking the growth potential of uh, European aquaculture. Uh, driving motto of Horizon program is uh, sustainable growth of the aquaculture, environmentally responsible production of highly valued fish products and excellent science that will generate innovation and later industrial growth. Nine topics have been recognized and were funded. Within food and oceans, aquaculture was placed. The coal evolution uh, is uh, segmented in, into three steps. So in the first step, basic and applied research uh, were in focus. Second step involved more applied science that generated innovation and demonstration of innovation. And final step, the moment in, in which we are now, covers the application of innovation in, in, in industry. So in total, uh, Europe invested 2.8 billion euro for uh, uh, boosting the aquaculture sector. And program success, success in terms of growth, production growth, uh, will yet to be, is yet to be seen in the following years. Uh, several challenges uh, have been recognized in the, sex, in, the, in the sector, like uh, complex uh, administration, Petal planning, conflicts with other users, uh, environmental sustainability, and many others. And uh, uh, but I also here uh, listed several projects 
uh, that successfully coped with those challenges and offered practical solutions. I also emphasize here the Aqua Excel research infrastructure project as a good example of uh, knowledge transfer among researchers and stakeholders. And uh, where is Croatia now? Uh, so you can see on this table that Croatian production uh, is increased. A significant uh, increase of total annual production can be seen where in 2050 we produced only 12,000 tons and today uh, more than 70,000 tons, which is uh, quite good. We have a strong support of, uh, of educational institutions like uh, uh, several institutes uh, from Zagreb, Pula, Split, Dubrovnik and research institutes as well. And um, so, uh, I will, in the next following slide, I will just shortly present uh, uh, our ongoing uh, research uh, with, um, with the innovative character. So we are partners on the project AdriAquanet, enhancing innovation and sustainability in Adriatic um, aquaculture. And my lab is, uh, 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 and <clears throat> my lab is especially involved in the topic, improving environmental sustainability of fish farming. And why is this topic so important? Because intensive production of farm fish requires fish uh, feed with high contact of, contact of, of uh, fish meal and fish oil, which on the long uh, run um, is not a sustainable way of uh, working because the main source of fish meal are small pelagic fish. And those uh, fish stocks are already fully overexploited. So our aim was to design a new formulation, which will be healthy for fish, healthy for consumers, ecologically sustainable and economically. We are joking that we will produce some miracle uh, uh, diet for fish. Uh, so novelty, novelty in this, reach, uh, in this reach, uh, research is use of uh, insect protein and partial, par partial replacement uh, with fish meal since the European Commission in 2000 they are interesting interesting source of uh, protein because they are they are very easily to digest the 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 insect is rich in protein it's a safe and sustainable and uh, the production is eco-friendly because the insect, uh, insects uh, converts organic waste into high quality protein. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we tested in our laboratory because we have uh, experimental hatchery. Uh, we tested several different uh, diets um, where we uh, the diets that contain different sources and different amounts of protein, having a fully fish meal group and fully veg ve veggie group. So the best perform um, feed in terms of fish best growth, in this case the one with only 50% of fish protein, but boosted uh, with the insect and veggie protein, were further tested at a commercial uh, scale. This is for the first time that this kind of um, a diet is tested on commercial scale generally in, in, in Europe. Fish growth, and uh, as it seems that there is no differences uh, in growth among fish uh, fed with, uh, with the novel diet or uh, in, in comparison to the commercial diet. Uh, so this is quite encouraging uh, for, for the sector. Uh, so where do we go from here? We still in Croatia have uh, many unused farming capacities. Only 35% uh, are utilized. So this uh, presents opportunity for further growth of the sector. Of course, uh, production uh, can always be upgraded. I listed some several steps that can be 
uh, uh, upgraded. But uh, for my standing point as a research, I, 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 I highly support uh, research and, and, and education in this sector. Uh, nice examples are European Aquaculture Technology in, in an Innovation Platform and project as um, AquaXL 2020. Okay. Well, uh, that was really interesting, and I'm sure that we will come back with uh, with uh, with the questions. We had a lot. This uh, thing about insects and how to use the insects was really inspiring, and we had a uh, yeah that that. Uh, uh, Kind yes, of, they are interesting. Yes, and, and we will come back uh, to that. Thank you, and thank you, especially because you really uh, managed to fit your presentation and the initial speak within the uh, given uh, time frame. So, so now we will uh, uh, continue with, with the uh, next panelist. So, uh, Dr. Pilant, uh, Pilar Blanco is the uh, a naval architect, but with a PhD in, in, in blue energy. Uh, she is working in the uh, Spanish state owned company uh, Navantia, developing new products. And uh, I think that she will uh, add something more information about that. So I don't want to go into, into, into detail because her presentation is about Navantia uh, and uh, uh, the blue economy. So, so some something more about industrial perspective and how that uh, can work also from uh, uh, Dr. Pilar Blanco. Thank you. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'm going to share my my screen. Oh, this. This one. Uh, are you watching the, yes. the presentation? Yep. Okay. Well, uh, good morning to everyone. <laughs> I like to to send to the organization the opportunity to participate in this event. Well, as Boris said. Uh, Navantia is a. Uh, this is the index that I'm going to to develop over my presentation. And Navantia is is a state-owned company, referencing the design and construction of high-technology military and civilian vessels and offshore wind installations. In the heirs of a long naval tradition since its first shipyard was opened in 1717 in the Bay of Cadiz. Our facilities have a strategic location in Spain, as we have shipyards faced to the main European seas, to the Atlantic Ocean in Ria de Ferrol and Cadiz Bay, and to the Mediterranean Sea in Cartagena. In all the shipyards, we can build and repair vessels and fulfill uh, will with all the life cycle support requirements. We develop our products related to the offshore wind in Ria de Ferrol and Badisca in the Atlantic coast. In addition with the facilities in Spain, we, we have office in Australia and several agreements with other reference companies in America, Asia and North Europe. As we can see in this slide, the main activity in is building including civil and war vessels and offshore wind device. But we also develop communication systems, control systems, engines, turbines, etc. Related to the blue economy, uh, Navantia is building new and repairing ships from 18th century, but since 2014, we introduced ourselves in the marine wine business and, and in the blue energy. This change in the policy allows us building complementary products and services in order to diversify our portfolio and the service offered to our traditional and new clients. And here we can see some of our products 
in the blue economy. It's not only ships, it's only it's devices like the, an, an SPAR or different types of floating devices. The Navantia strategy is first of all, diver diversification and strengthening of Navantia's product and service portfolio. We laid out a strategic plan focused on technological development, product diversification and new designs. The economic sustainability, sustainability sorry, with the main goal of reducing manufacturing costs. It's very important the development of the stakeholders network in, in the field of innovation with administration, clients, universities, technological centers, supply chain, and so on as well as establishing new consortium framework with tier one supply chain and reforcing a specialized supply chain. We need, well, all the blue economy needs pro new professional profiles. So we cooperate with institutions in order to develop new training course according to the future of the sector. And finally, change in the energy model. The new opportunities that we find in the blue growth are innovation in products, services and products through operational efficiency and digital transformation. We are searching for seas and ocean CO2 neutrality, developing high performance fuel cells for marine environment, integration and auxiliary systems, hybrid systems for the conversion or reconversion of ships and power plants, Floating green structures, including offshore substations, and integration of wave systems on existing floating platforms. We need to pay attention to the sustainable and management of marine resources. So it is important to develop development of multi-purpose floating platforms and sustainable solutions for construction and reuse of offshore platforms. And finally, persistent monitoring and digitalization of seas and ocean using marine robotics. And if you have any questions for me. Well, we'll have, yeah, we have a, a few questions, but we will uh, come back to you uh, a bit later. So so first let's hear everyone. So, so I will now switch to, uh, our third speaker, uh, it's Jeremy Bazan. Uh, so he is a, a coordinator of uh, Campus, Campus Mondial de la Mer. Uh, it's that uh, first community in France, which is devoted to understanding of, and developing of marine resources. And uh, his presentation is about encouraging blue innovation, which we all are really interested and want to learn and hear more about. So, Jeremy, um, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Boris. Uh, I'm going to share my screen right now. Okay, I hope you can see it. So my name is, uh, is uh, Jeremy Bazin and I come from the very west part of uh, France, uh, from uh, Brest at the tip of uh, the Brittany region. Uh, and as you say, Brest and, and Brittany are the most important places in France when we talk about uh, marine science and technology as it represents more than 60,000 jobs in the region. So I'm an employee of Technopole Brest Yours, and we are a business support organization which was created 30 years ago to encourage uh, the business and job uh, creation through innovation in all fields of uh, the economy. We just are working in the f uh, with the, the University of uh, Brest, uh, but also uh, other uh, research centers and education institutes to encourage knowledge transfer. And each year, to give you a, a rough idea of uh, our activity, uh, in terms of quantity, we are supporting 15 to 20 startups. Uh, and since 2017, we are also supporting existing companies uh, uh, which want to uh, innovate. So at Technopole, 
Uh, I am responsible for the ocean activities that go under the umbrella of Campus Mondial de la Mer, which is a maritime cluster. Uh, it is an initiative focused on marine science and technology funded by local authorities uh, that gathers all the maritime stakeholders from the tip of uh, Brittany, including startups, large businesses, research centers, education institutes, and so on. And Campus aims at making people working together, encouraging innovation at local level, but also encouraging the development of international collaborations. The ocean is really a local uh, and regional priority included in, current and up, in the current and upcoming regional smart specialization strategy in which we are deeply involved. A few months ago, the campus uh, was associated to the CEU project, uh, the European University of the Seas, uh, by the University of, of Brest, and I am really happy uh, of it uh, and to be with you today, and as it is the first time I, I, I am in Croatia, even if we are online. So uh, I propose to start um, on the importance of ocean observation. So ocean observation was the central theme for the last CTEC Week 2020 that we organized online from October 12th to the 16th and which attracted more than 700 participants from all over the world. And for your knowledge, um, all the sessions are available for free by December 16th. And there was notably a session that might be of interest uh, for you, uh, which is called Cooperation Models for Ocean Knowledge and Innovation that we organized together with the uh, OECD and uh, the European cluster Eurocean. And o ocean observation was also the central theme for the third publication of our international journal called SONA that you can find our, on our website. Having said that, we observe today that the oceans and coasts, um, uh, we observe them uh, so that we can describe and understand them. We aim to optimize how, to, how we use them, record any changes we find there, and plan for the future. Brest, at the westernmost Atlantic tip of France, has always acted as a ga gateway for voyages of discovery. Brest Tide Gauge has now produced one of the longest sea level observation series in the world. Yet, long before its installation, people living on, uh, east coast, on this coast will have been developing skills in observing natural ocean processes. The sea was vitally important to them for fishing and travel mainly. These original uh, observation, observations from a fixed point uh, were soon enriched with added information gathered by ocean exploration missions for which Brest was often the support base. The ocean emerged from obscurity. The second half of the 20th century and especially the first two decades of the 21st have seen a real explosion in observation methods and tools. These have been combined with a rapid growth in both the quantity and the precision of lines of scientific inquiry in terms of both numbers and equity. At present, our prime objective is to apply human and artificial intelligence so as, to act, so as to extract from the data those elements that will further enrich our understanding of the ocean system. My message here is thus to ask funding parties, both public and private, to maintain and amplify, where possible, their involvement in the funding of the science and to ask the scientists to continue their work to better know the ocean, to anticipate changes and offer opportunities for knowledge transfer. And I will come back to this uh, uh, in, in a few minutes. My second point is focused on skills development. Thinking we can observe the ocean without any skill without any scientific method is just crazy. Skills are here, to my, are to my mind, sorry, at the heart of our topic. We are here talking about women and men that are able to provide us information on what is the ocean and how it evolves, having in mind that we are very far from knowing it today. In order to develop skills, CEU gathering uh, uh, six cities, as Boris said, uh, uh, joint forces to work on marine science. Within CEU, uh, and this is the reason we are, why we support it, the objective is to force, to force stronger links and promote students' mobility between the universities. 
To me, this is a, a really good example of what we can do to encourage the skills development both, both on the student side, but also on the academic side with international and transdiscipline dimensions. I wanted to have a very quick focus on another initiative that is called East Blue and led by the University of Brest, including another university in Brittany, IFREMER, the main French research center on marine sciences, and other Brest graduate schools. East Blue is an interdisciplinary school for the Blue Planet. Funded by the French government, it aims at strengthening knowledge and understanding of all oceans works in the context of global change. And within East Blue, a practical cool tool sorry, is being created called Ocean Project Hub, who will enable in a physical location, when it will be possible again, on, on the Brest Science Park uh, site to propose to students to work on scientific issues identified by businesses. A message in the bottle here I am launching is to get connected with other similar initiatives. And my last point is about encouraging the knowledge transfer and more largely innovation based on the, these two fundamentals that are ocean observation and the development of skills. If one is missing, innovation is not possible or is highly limited. This is really the fertile ground we are working with in Brest uh, and in other places in Europe and in the world in order to make sure that uh, from sciences is extracted knowledge, but also, and I insist in, on it, ideas that can be converted either in a new product or a service. And uh, this is our job. And to do so, we make sure that people, and I come back on women, women and men, do not only think about their own mission, but have a broader vision of it so that they open their minds, they know each other, and they want to collaborate. One, one example is Ocean Akasan that we organized since 2016 in, in Brest. Uh, it is a 48 uh, hours challenge, non-stop challenge that aims at developing new products and services based on data collected from uh, IFREMER, from the university, from the hydrographic service, from the space, French space agency, uh, and so on. And, and this year, we organized it at the international scale, notably with cities from the CEU project. I'm thinking about Cadiz and Split, and it enabled the connections between people, uh, almost 600, uh, from all over the world, and it enabled the development of new ideas. And we are thus in the phase where we are supporting these ideas to be converted, if, if valuable, in new product or service. And as a, a conclusion, I would like to mention that each of us, business support organizations, academics, research centers, businesses, NGOs, have their I have to play our role, the role we are expected to play simply. But also, have in mind that each player is only a part of the puzzle, a part of the equation. As we can see in Ocean uh, with uh, Ocean Akerson or CEU, making connections with other people from other areas is much more difficult than making connections between our frontiers, but it is the way towards innovation. So don't hesitate to use business support organization to help you knock at the door of the entrepreneur or the researcher, and I would be uh, happy to answer uh, for some questions. Thank you for your attention. Uh, well, Jeremy, thank you for uh, creating, especially to uh, create the uh, case for the business support organizations and how they can uh, support both sides, scientific and, and, and entrepreneurial or industrial, because I'm also coming from the business support organization. And I'm, it's always great to uh, see uh, someone doing a really good job and having a, a good story that supports that business support organization can really help and, and foster uh, the innovation uh, within the industry and, and how to transfer knowledge from science sector to industry. Uh, but for, uh, again, uh, uh, the last but not uh, uh, least uh, uh, speaker in our first uh, round is uh, Hanna Latkowska. She, is, she has a background in, in uh, marine science, uh, working at the Inst Institute of Oceanography of uh, the University of Gdansk. Uh, she is uh, experienced, uh, so she has a lot of projects that she participated. So as a manager and as a, as a 
part of the scientific community, uh, international research projects, both from Horizon and, and, and before. And uh, it would be uh, excellent to hear her presentation towards brew growth because there is a lot of uh, excellent experience that she can share with us. So, Hannah, the floor is yours. Hi, Boris. Thank you very much for your introduction and for the invitation to join this very interesting session. Please let me share my screen. My name is Hanna Wontkowska, and I work at the Institute of Oceanography uh, on the project management and also on technology transfer. This year, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of our University of Gdańsk, which is now the largest higher education institution in North Poland, with over 20,000 students who can choose between 11 faculties and nearly 90 fields of study. Uh, for this session, I would give you some examples of blue growth implementation in the area of innovative aquaculture, education, also ocean governance. As we already heard from the presentation of Tanya from University of Split, aquaculture is very high on the European Union agenda with regards to the food sector. Also, the European Commission Blue Growth Agenda for the Baltic Sea region identifies aquaculture as one of the most promising sectors of the region's maritime economy in terms of growth and job potential. In the Pomeranian region, when, when we live, however, the aquaculture sector is not the widespread established sector yet. The common cultivated species in Poland are trout and carp. However, there is a growing interest in new technologies and species. Like, for example, the Jurassic salmon investment, which is now the world's first fully organic Atlantic salmon farm, which is using the thermal water from the Jurassic period. So over the last five years, we have engaged in aquaculture projects with the focus on sustainable use of marine resources, testing innovative methods and tools, and also on the cross-sectoral international cooperation with the special engagement of the business partners. I will start the short presentation uh, on the first of, of those, which was an inaquatic project uh, implemented under the European Regional Development Fund. It was mostly on the development and transfer of innovative aquaculture technologies in the Baltic countries. The University of Gdansk was a partner, and our main job was to establish um, the first laboratory scale white lake stream aquaculture in Poland. At the beginning, the job uh, seems, seemed to be a little bit challenging, but in the final course of the project, uh, the aquaculture uh, which we tested here was recognized as the, one of the best ideas of uh, technology transfer in Poland. And I would also underline the very interesting participation of partner project because apart from the crustacean uh, cultivation in the last system, there was also examples of the German case with the aquaponic experiment and also um, with Lithuanian colleagues where the geothermal water was used uh, to feed the RAS systems. Another initiative, which is called the Blue Platform, is strictly divided to the promotion and further development of the outcomes of the project in the area of blue growth. Between them, of course, also the aquaculture, but also the many offshore sectors. If anybody is interested in further information about the aquaculture in the Baltic countries, please reserve your time for the webinar, which will be organized on 17th of November. Online event, everybody is welcome. Our last project, which is being implemented now, it's called AquaVip. It's aquaculture virtual career development platform with the objective to boost education of the labor market. And this project is at an answer to the stakeholders community, which always underlines the need of the qualified labor force. The project is divided into 
three main services, which are addressed to the youth and students, to the professionals in the branch to support their success and also to gain another experts from the different fields, and also about the presenting uh, aquaculture innovation in the frame of the online service. Uh, for this education, also plan to develop further experiments with, which will be concentrated this time on RAS technology and its further implementation also for the next trials of the shrimp cultivation and also uh, about the microalgae and microalgae application. I would like also manage the very interesting project which is undertaken by the Faculty of Law at Harvard University and it's really deal with ocean government. It's called Sea Plan Space. It's really proposing the very modern instruments for manage the special planning and enable stakeholders to deal with many aspects of use of the marine space. Also, the Sea Plan Space project is also offering the sexual workshops presenting on the project website the manuals and also is planning to implement in the end of the project the portal and of course establish a professional network. Successful implementation of the project will not be possible without the excellent scientific and laboratory base. The Faculty of Oceanography and Geography where we work is providing the regular student courses on bachelor and master's degree. I would like to mention, for example, the aquaculture, business and technology, and also oceanography, and also many disciplines regarding the law information expertises, and so on. And I would like also to underline the research and development areas which were not presented in my short presentation. However, it's a very worth to present, like, for example, marine biology, and also the many use and activities uh, on offshore. Here's also in the picture our new, I would say, brand new research vessel, who is fully equipped to perform the coastal investigation. When I think about perspectives, the trends for the future uh, development of the blue sector in, uh, in the first of all area of aquaculture, I would mention the marine species and their potential for recirculating aquaculture system, also the combination of animals and plant production in aquaponic system, also the great potential of algae, which could be harvesting also products and also produced. And also I would like to especially underline the aspects of life cycle assessment, which should be further analyzed when we are thinking about uh, use of the marine resources and also many aspects of circular economy. Well, thank you for your attention. I would be happy to answer your question. Uh, thank you, Hannah. We have a few questions from, from the uh, uh, crowd and, and some, uh, but also I'm, I'm, so I'll start try to combine them and, and, and to integrate. Because we had some also some technical dif difficulties at some point, we uh, haven't seen your chat. So if if uh, there are some questions which are already posted and I'm not uh, available, uh, I, I I'm not able to see them. I would like to ask uh, our colleagues from the uh, support just to uh, copy paste it into our internal group because we see the internal uh, uh, chat. Uh, one question uh, that maybe to start with Tanya, but uh, feel free to, uh, so you are all free to uh, step in and add at, at some point, because especially uh, this is, uh, so at some point at your presentation, uh, you you had some, uh, you listed some, uh, let's say, blue growth topics, uh, which are kind of emphasized in, in the previous period. So, uh, Okay, this year is maybe not well usual because of the uh, because of the situation and and everything. But okay, what 
by your opinion, were, were still main topics in maybe this year? And what do you see as, as blue growth topics in the near future? So not do not go overboard like in five to 10 years, but what's right now on the table and, and how uh, can uh, maybe we fit into it? So, so this is a question for Tanya, but all of you are really welcome to, to just step in uh, after, uh, let's say, initial Tanya, Tanya's answer. Okay, thank you, Boris. Well, um, uh, so we are talking about period last year and this year. Uh, the many research uh, topics are um, split into four focus uh, areas. But before uh, saying those um, areas, I need to point out that uh, European Union invests 75 billion euro over uh, a seven year program, Horizon 2020. So we are now we are now in the last uh, last period of Horizon 2020, and so four uh, four focus area are, uh, covers um, building a low carbon climate resilience future. Second, uh, connecting economics and environmental gains. Uh, it's based on cir circular economy, and for example, our research that uh, that includes insect is a great example of um, circular economy, and it supports uh, three R principles: um, re uh, reducing, reusing, and uh, recycling. Third, digitalization and transforming uh, transforming European industry and services, and uh, which. Um, show to be quite important during uh, this uh, COVID crisis. And fourth, uh, the last one, um, boosting the effectiveness of the security uh, union. And uh, in 2020, in January, uh, the, the night uh, uh, framework uh, program will start. And it will be called um, Horizon Europe. And uh, the official, as officially stated, the main objective of Horizon Europe and uh, that will have, uh, uh, but it's still not official, budget of uh, 100 billion euro. Uh, so the main objective um, will be as follows. Uh, strengthening European scientists, the Scientific and Technological Foundation, increasing innovation capacity, as, as always, it's like main pillar, uh, competitiveness and the number of jobs in Europe. And the last one, the one a topic that you Boris mentioned at the beginning, which is quite important to fulfill uh, to um, um, fulfilling citizen priorities and uh, maintaining socioeconomic models and values. And also, uh, Horizon Europe uh, will support open science, open innovation, so that can be uh, innovation easily transferred to uh, in the industry, and also. Um, uh, industrial competitiveness. So that's a small uh, uh, resume of uh, of the of the topics that um, will be present in following years. Thank you. Anyone want to jump in with some okay expectation for next year or two? Or I can't see you. Can't hear you. So please unmute yourself. If I may, Boris. Yep. Well, um, <clears throat> I totally agree what, uh, with what uh, has been just said about uh, Horizon Europe. Uh, I would also, also refer to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, uh, where we can find transportation, we can find health, we can find uh, food, uh, pollution, climate uh, topics, and so on. There are uh, more than uh, 10 uh, or 14 topics, I think 17, 17 goals of the sustainable uh, of the Un uh, United Nations, and I think the sea, the ocean, uh, we we tended to uh, uh, use them, just to use them, to exploit them, and I think we have to uh, now think how still to use them, but in a sustainable way, when we transport goods. Uh, when we can uh, take uh, drugs from the ocean, uh, when uh, we can, uh, how we can also uh, improve our energy consumption and so on. So th this is the first point, point I wanted to raise. 
Um, the second uh, uh, is about niches that we can find between um, areas, between sectors. I mean, between digital activities and ocean activities, between ocean activities and food, between digital, acti uh, between ocean activities and health, and so on. And this is where we can find, for example, new topics that are emerging, uh, such as um, cybersecurity, uh, which is which, which is applied to maritime activities, where we can find also artificial intelligence that is that can be applied to maritime activities, and so on. And I, I think the, the cities we are representing today, uh, um, as well as in the CEU uh, consortium, but also um, most of the European cities with a, 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 a sea frontier, let's say and other cities in the world have something to, to bring on the table. Okay, thank you. Anyone wants to add or I can post my question to... Hannah, you wanted to say something or... No? Okay. So, I just, my... I just, yes. can, I just can show the add that also, that also yes. many interest is coming from the sectoral programs, like for example, the Marina, Fisheries Fund and also from the national initiatives, which are really complementary to the main European goals. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Lara, anyway, you can uh, uh, kind of build up on on, on this uh, challenge. But there is also one question for from the from the, the audience. I know that you I, I know that you see it. So, what kind of new profiles? You had had your, your on your mind that was on on your mm -hmm. uh, presentation, but just also uh, I just want to add since uh, I think it may be related at some point to that. So so how important for uh, for you as a company is to uh, connect the research with with uh, uh, operations and education and and creating a human. Uh, capital that can uh, actually support all those your strategic goals, which are really ambitious and, and not easy to to address. Yeah, well, we uh, I think that the companies which works in the blue growth and in particular in the blue economy, the blue energy, sorry, uh, needs uh, to to keep in contact with the research centers because we need. Um, new light materials, more flexible materials. For example, in order to 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 get flexible cables that can connect to a floating wind device, um, we need uh, sustainable mat materials that can can be can resist the the hard environment the, because the marine environment is very very aggressive so we need materials that can resist these conditions but at the end of their life can be um, can be oh, reused so can be oh, they don't they we cannot use a material that at the end it's going to be more waste in the sea we need more materials that will be more recyclables <laughs> is the word <laughs> and the, we need to uh, maintain the the investigation, the research, and all the development of the investigation in these ways that make more flexible, more light, and more sustainable materials. We need uh, we need investigate in IT as as they said. We the the artificial intelligence has a very is it's a very powerful um, tool that we can help us to control to to get more more efficiency in the energy it's it's a very important um, point that we have to to develop and to trust to pass from the university to the companies there's not only um, robots that could select a ball from a box we have to use it in the in the companies we need this as they said this we need 
transfer this, this knowledge. And we need to investigate in new legislation about intelligent, artificial intelligence, in which way the new device are being influenced by this, by this intelligence. Who is the responsible of, if an accident happens, who, who is the responsible? The, the developer, the, the owner of the application, the seller of the application, we need regulation and we need to investigate in this way. And um, Navantia, the companies need people who, who can use the already learned knowledge in order to, to, to cooperate and to complement the energy, energetic sector, the naval sector, the agriculture, to um, people who can think in an open mind way that they can um, make in a one device different part, different sectors. Yeah. And we need people who, who, who dare face the new challenges represented in the in the new device so we we must to maintain the the innovation and the new new thinking the people need a new new thinking in order to the things the all the knowledge that we learn could be applied in in new ways new devices new ideas this type of things and it's important to think in in what is going to happen with the elements or material that we are using now okay. what is going to happen at the end of her of its life thank you uh so uh, actually uh, coming maybe switching to to jeremy with with this uh, okay using of new materials and and also using that question that my colleague from university has split that covers pretty much uh, the same challenges of connecting uh, uh scientific and and, and uh, let's say community and industry so so his question was how to uh, have a, so very diverse group are covering uh, uh, research industry and support, and they are all coming also from different countries, maybe with different cultures. So how do you, at, at one point, how do you see future of that joint cooperation without borders or across the borders? Uh, what type of projects would be best starting point? So what do you see as, as someone from, from, let's say the same, type of activity, same, same area that we are doing. And maybe if you can actually uh, throw in some kind of good e example of, of how particular business maybe started collaboration or some kind of project in laboratory or vice versa, because uh, that part of your uh, of your presentation sounds really interesting and that's always a good to hear some good practice and you obviously had some results that we really would like to hear. Oh, so, so this is relatively open question. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll try to say something on, on this. Thank you, Boris. Um, maybe to, to to end the, the discussion with uh, with Pilar. Um, I think we should not um, oppose the business world and the um, scientific world. Uh, businesses are here to make money. Uh, but they are they are uh, open-minded and they, they do their business as they can, um, trying to make money, of course, but with the technological uh, opportunities or sometimes gaps that exist. Uh, and this is where it is important, uh, both at local but also international level, to collaborate because uh, it is not... Uh, um, it is not uh, sufficient just to encourage uh, businesses uh, to uh, innovate just by um, uh, forcing them or uh, um, voting a new law. I think it's also good to encourage companies uh, to collaborate between people between people uh, with scien scientists. But it's uh, I'm not defending businesses here. I'm just saying that it's important to to, to make the connections 
and in, in, in both ways. I mean, from the company to the scientists or to the labs uh, and vice versa. This is this this was my my first uh, my first point. Um, then uh, on uh, yeah, then the, the two or three questions you asked Boris are, are quite complex. Uh, I, I would like to have the answer. I'm not sure to have it. I think it's a kind of perpetual uh, work we, we need to 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 do. Um, how do um, how do I see the future of joint cooperation without borders? Um, I, I'm working uh, at local level uh, in a in a maritime cluster in a, in a French region. Um, have uh, we have co collaborations with other maritime clusters in other countries or in other regions? Uh, it takes time, but where we can uh, be uh, supported is uh, through uh, supra uh, organizations. Uh, the European Union was uh, mentioned as a founder. I think it's a it's a way of being encouraged to work from one country to to another. But as I said in my presentation, I think it's not the the most difficult uh, step. Uh, working uh, um, at international level is not the most difficult step. It's it's complicated. It takes time, but I think it's sometimes more difficult. Uh, from one lab to a company uh, on the same uh, science park. Uh, maybe, uh, Boris, you have the same uh, experience. Um, and then, um, um, in, in fact, um, it might be a kind of a cultural, um, uh, cultural uh, challenge. Um, um, maybe uh, in France, we have uh, a lot to learn about knowledge transfer. Uh, we are uh, doing our best, but there are some very good success stories. Um, I, I would take one example, one example of a, a company that was uh, created by um, a PhD um, uh, coming from a graduate school in Brest. He was studying on uh, teledetection and uh, spatial activities. And after his PhD, uh, he uh, got to create uh, his own company, uh, uh, and, and which was then bought uh, by by, uh, by a, a big, uh, big, uh, big group called the CLS. Uh, but it, 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 in fact, it, I just wanted to say that uh, it, it is in the spirit of the person to uh, develop um, uh, a kind of business approach, and this is our job as a science park, as a business support organization, to open the mind. Some people are, are close to innovation. Some people are closed to uh, economics. Some people are totally close to science. Uh, but I think it's our job, at least, to make sure that uh, they hear our message of um, uh, collaborations, of uh, open minds, to, to, to open their, their mind in order to avoid um, letting us in their own uh, silo, and 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 I, I, I'm not saying that uh, we are doing everything well. I'm just saying that we are trying at our local level, uh, and this goes um, through um, uh, events and matchmaking events, events such as the CTEC week, such as Ocean Akasan, where people get in touch. Uh, 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 and, and I think that's that's it. But they are not naturally going to the entrepreneur or to the uh, 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 scientist uh, door uh, very uh, very uh, easily. Uh, yeah, that uh, I don't know if I answered your question totally or not totally. Uh, I can try to reformulate if needed. Yeah, we can. Can you hear? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's it's not. Uh, I didn't expect to get definitive action, and also my colleague Nicola, probably it it is uh, some challenge that exists, and it will. We uh, are in a position just to have a, a, a 
temporary answers for uh, these challenges and finding a way how to uh, maybe address that that better. And that will be this follows my uh, the question for Hannah follows this uh, uh, this discussion because she uh, described a lot of really cool projects that also obviously created a lot of insights and a new knowledge and and new technologies so what are from your perspective so what is the follow-up so which are the main challenges or maybe opportunities of how to integrate how to transfer these insights and results of your uh, cool projects into either food industries or other industries so but what was what was the follow-up did it happen which are the challenges what was from your perspective what what was the okay you ended the project with results and what's the next i thank you for this question actually aquaculture is very convenient examples because as a branch also as a sector it really integrates lots of expertise and also lots of a lot of knowledge in case of first of all cultivated species and also about the technologies the examples and experience we had first with the um, local shrimp aquaculture which was kind of novel especially in the country like poland who has not a long tradition in consumption of seafood so what's a real challenge but at the end of the project and also now we still experience and growing interest about the industry in further development based on the examples of the the possibility of shrimps cultivation in the uh, closed system. We received a lot of inquiries, not maybe from the already established and traditional aquaculture practitioners and owners of the trout and carps investment, but in the most cases from the energy sector, because many investors have seen their interest and also their potential for growth and for economic development in invest in this new innovative methods as for now there was no investment in poland about the shrimp ras aquaculture but i've heard that was already at least three proposal submitted to um, international program and also for the local funding uh, and we are we are still work further on the technology and also about the special itself for the second round of trials, which will be in this case more in demonstration, demonstrators, dem I'm sorry, more in demonstra demonstrative scale, we'll also invite the business partner sector and will propose experiments along their interest, I would say. So that was very interesting presentation from Tanya because I'm also interested in this novel novel feed, if it's uh, suits for shrimps or only for fish species. So this is the, this kind of um, experiment, this kind of action we can still, um, we can still further develop. Regarding also your question in the um, little bit further perspective, um, uh, for, first of all, for the food sector, it's of course the proposal of the product of the high value regarding the for example omega-3 acids content etc and also locally bred relatively much more expensive than the important products for for the called um, for the aquaculture from the east can from the far east countries however there is still interest for the luxury product like that and for example the examples of the german uh, shrimps farm showing that it's still possible for further development and also the the other industries can benefit from especially from the raw materials which can be obtained from the aquaculture like for example for, for the shrimps it could be uh, hitosine for the pharmacy and for the cosmetics and also regarding the fish there is a large large value chain around and also i would like to manage the large industry of fish feed production which is like a separate separate sector itself and also i would like to manage maybe not the obvious connection but also regarding the 
RAS technology and possible indication of aquaponics, for example. There's a very mm, impressive interest, for example, from the architecture, from the concept of the modern cities, from the concept of the sea farm. And I would mention the example of the University of Greenwich from London, who really established the locally aquaculture and, the, and their mm, architecture faculty. And, and they're really promoting uh, the use of the, of this technology itself. And also, I would like to manage, because we also deal with microalgae and microalgae, the potential of um, these resources for the first generation biofuels. Thank you. OK, thank you. And, and maybe now going back to insects or that part that really was interesting from, uh, so, okay, I'm the, at some point outsider here, but this really looked cool. So, so, uh, so how it really works is, uh, they, are they fresh? So, so because, you know, can they be locally produced or you need to transport them? And what's the logistics about it? So how can be done that in a, in a, let's say, operational level in, in if you really want to, uh, uh, set up a big uh, uh, farm that depends on the on the uh, insects as a, as a, a main source of, of food. So just few, just you know, is it you know which type of quantities, how it can be spent, uh, sent, uh, logistics and stuff. So so just basic info, please. Uh, please turn on your mic because we we can't hear you. So yeah, it happens to everyone. Uh, but it's turned on. Okay, yeah, it happened also to me, so yeah. No, okay. Uh, thank you for your question, but uh, later on I, I, I also have a question for Hannah uh, regarding uh, shrimp uh, production in RAS system. And I found your presentation uh, very interesting. Okay, so uh, for insects, um, in 2017, uh, the European Commission allowed the use of uh, insect protein uh, that can be used in aquaculture. And, and at that time, uh, uh, research uh, started on uh, different uh, aquaculture species. Uh, first started with salmon, of course, because it's, um, it's the species with the highest production in Europe. And uh, on, so we are not talking about the whole worm, we are talking about uh, isolated protein that is used uh, as a feed, okay? And uh, the, the good uh, side of the insect is that can be grown on uh, waste. So uh, th that way you, you're doing uh, recycling. And, and, and you can um, and, uh, have different uh, species of, of insect. As some several species have very high uh, level of protein, like 70%, which is quite high. And, 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 and um, this insect meal is very digestible. Uh, it is also used uh, in another, um, uh, for another species cultivation, like a chicken, uh, pigs. And uh, uh, so, so there is uh, several companies right now in Europe and outside of Europe that produce uh, uh, insect meal. Uh, in Europe, we have uh, three companies in, uh, in uh, France, uh, Spain and Netherlands. Netherlands has the, the oldest tradition and, and the, the, the products are um, uh, very expensive because they, they, they have a, a, a technology that can, uh, that can, so that they're using new novel technology that can obtain very clean protein from the insect. Um, the the farm the the farm is very interesting there is a, a, there is a, a different strategy of, of of insect farming but the, the during um, uh, development of that of this industry uh, they noted the many different diseases but uh, the good uh, thing is that those diseases that they noticed uh, are not um, uh, reachable for the humans so, so <laughs> like in any yeah, in that can day. change, you know, as we can see in the last <laughs> last years. So, so okay, but nevertheless, let's <laughs> say. Yeah, but they they are specific for for insects. No, they're not. They cannot be transferred. At least as we know that. A anyhow, um, 
for salmon, they completely um, so they, they they don't need to use any more fish meal for 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 farming uh, salmon, which is excellent. So it said so that industry is more sustainable in that way. Uh, for Cibrian sea bass, species that are typically uh, farmed in Mediterranean, we can go with the re replacement of fish meal not more than 20-30%. And because uh, we have only several companies at the moment in Europe, price is very high. So um, we need to increase the, the number of, of companies so, uh, so that, uh, uh, so, because, so to increase competition <laughs> among, among them. And so, consequently, the prices will go uh, will go down. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Did I? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yes, yes, that's. And yes, and what another thing? Another thing. If I uh, that's something that I need to point out that uh, that European Union is in a deficit of protein, so we import annually very big amount of, 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 uh, uh, of um, protein, raw material, uh, raw material rich in protein, uh, plant, plant protein from uh, uh, USA, Brazil, and, uh, and they don't have the same uh, farming condition and, um, and certificates and uh, high quality standards as Europe. So that's why I think that, that this uh, novel industry need to, to be um, need to, to encourage need to be founded so they so they, that, that these new sources of protein um, uh, grew in Europe. Okay, thank you. Uh, so one uh, question for Pilar. Uh, I'm building on some questions from the audience, but also something that Hannah was talking. So so. So, so as a, as a, as a company that that is in in a blue uh, uh, industry, uh, not always so blue or green, but uh, trying to do your uh, best. But uh, and they were uh, Hannah was talking about uh, labor market and new skills and new types of education. So, so do you envision uh, that the demand for uh, some specific skills and knowledge uh, uh, in the future from your industry perspective? Are they going to be really changed, or maybe, okay, everything is changing? But you know, what do you expect from uh, universities and for from the official, let's say, uh, uh, educational system, or it's more like a lifelong learning and some different type of cooperation again uh, with the educational system? So, how, what, which type of specific skills and knowledge you envision or expect to emerge? Well, I think it's it's going to be a a mix, no? Uh, we need as 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 Jeremy said, it's it's not a, we can we can't separate the university and the companies. Uh, uh, for example, Navantia uh, has a close relationship with the universities of their zones. And we we develop uh, doctorates in our in our facilities, and and we have uh, dual vac vacancy vocationally for a uh, course. So we need that the pure investigations that um, is is doing in the university ambient in order to develop these materials and these type of things but we need that the people who who are degrees the, the the young people they need the the knowledge but then they need this open mind that i said it's it's not the the knowledge that that we have is going to be growing developing because now we are we are making prototypes. We are in. We are investigating in new device, because a few years ago was the the first uh, wave energy wave energy converter. The first wave energy converter was floating few years ago. So now we are 
investigating. We are innovating. The companies are are making the force to to produce these new ideas that the university produce. So, is that the the knowledge that we have that we can introduce in new ways. We can we can be enough imaginative or I don't I I don't know how to say exactly in English. <laughs> My word is in Spanish. Well the the fact is that now we have then enough knowledge to to make new things. Okay. And the the knowledge will be developed, but we need um, the contact with the university in order to 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 make the the way together. We yeah. cannot be separate. And uh, regarding that uh, 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 integration and and transformation within the industries and with local communities, one question again maybe. Uh, a bit different for for uh, for or difficult for for Jeremy, but somehow uh, some all questions are different and simple in 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 in, in a way. So uh, so you you had a you described a case of the PhD student that started uh, uh, businesses based on on the knowledge he or she created. Uh, uh, but uh, so but also uh, probably part of your. Uh, challenges to convince uh, existing companies, uh, either small or, or, and big, and, and existing communities to change, to improve, to, to transform uh, into more technology-based businesses, or at least to uh, enable more sustainable way of doing businesses. And by your opinion, what are the, uh, the main or which are the which parts of or aspects are more resilient to changes. Is it about changing the culture of the way of how people are thinking or doing things? Or is it uh, the, uh, the difficulties when introducing a, a te new technologies and, and new knowledge? So what can you, uh, maybe a few thoughts about that from, from your perspective? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a bit both. But uh, it depends on the country you are talking about, I think. Uh, it also depends on the market you want to address, because the time is not the same when um, we talk about introducing a new uh, product related to uh, the health sector in, in the marine biotechnology sector, for example, even if we can see that uh, within the COVID-19 crisis, things can be quick as well. Um, um, then when, when, when we are talking about technological uh, issues or gaps, I think things and products or services can be delivered quite quickly by companies with the support of scientists. I would say that uh, to answer to your questions, maybe, uh, uh, I, I would say that the cultural aspects are much more resilient um, uh, to, to change. Um, I would be very interested, even, I, I, I traveled a bit when, um, when I was a student, or, or uh, including my, um, my career at uh, Technopole in, in different continents. I uh, see, uh, I, I saw that some countries are much more... Uh, um, fluent when mixing business and 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 and, uh, and, and science uh, than, than than France but I also see that uh, that we have some uh, concurrence um, uh, or some cousins that are working the same way as we are um, France still is a, a land of, uh, of innovation sometimes it takes times um, but uh, yeah, I, say the, I would say the cultural heritage we have uh, is, a, is quite, uh, quite heavy. Uh, the techn technological gaps uh, is not really a, a gap. In fact, it's just uh, uh, always a new challenge, uh, a kind of um, challenge that uh, teams of scientists and businesses has, they have to, uh, to uh, answer together. 
Yeah, I, I actually agree with that uh, cultural challenges and that they are most resilient. I just wanted to see if that's also in your uh, in France and, and uh, do we have the same issues in, in, in a similar way? And, and we, we, we do. Yes, we, we do. Uh, but there, there, are, there are a lot of progress. Uh, I started 10 years ago and uh, I already see some progress in the way people are thinking. Um, so it's already a, a good start. Yeah, and uh, we are only have a few minutes left and I, I feel that we just started, but but maybe just, uh, this was a question for everyone. Uh, and uh, it will start with Hannah and I'm, I'm not sure if it, if you'll have enough time for, for the question was about uh, biggest threat and opportunities, but we were, we were talking a lot about opportunities. So, by your opinion, Anna, what are the which are the biggest threats for a blue economy uh, sector development in, in the near future? So, so maybe not to end in a dark tone, but just to know what we are facing and what we are supposed to address. As far as I can understand, there is a large work to do, especially for the technology, because looking at the remaining natural resources on Earth, there should be undertake the immediate research on improvement of technology in case of energy consumption and also about the use of the water. That's why I, I would say, from my perspective, that will be the, the number one. And also the further investigation of the potential of the species, which are maybe not cultivated now, but which could be also used for the future applications. And of course, as I already said, the work towards circular economy, like zero waste economy. Okay, thank you. And this was really to the point and concise. And since we are uh, supposed to end in a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. I will uh, use the opportunity uh, to thank you all for for participating in in this uh, panel. To to thank all uh, 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 people who attended and listened to us for for the last ninety minutes. Uh, this was a really great experience and great pleasure, and I would. Uh, really uh, like to uh, thank you, and uh, I've just got a, a message from from uh, uh, from Nicola, the colleague from from Split, uh, to invite everyone to join Blue Talks uh, webinars on blue economy at c.eu.c uh, slash eu dot org at blue slash blue dash talks. So there is a link in, in the chat, so, so uh, please uh, copy paste it. Uh, that was uh, great and I really uh, enjoyed it and I hope that everyone was uh, enjoying it the same way as I am. Uh, until the next time, hopefully in person and in Split, because Split is a great place to be. Uh, even in this not so uh, uh, summer months, it's still a great place to be. And uh, we are uh, looking for the invitation from uh, Splick to attend the next in-person session, hopefully sometime next year or after, after it. So thank you very much uh, all and uh, take care. Uh, take care for your uh, closed ones and uh, will it will be much much better next year? Uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you.